Hello everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Caleb Bonet, also known as Zero Tep, and today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on making generative ambient music. You can apply these tips to uh, almost any kind of music and any kind of generative process, so I'm just going to show you a few things that I've done. First thing that I've done in this project specifically, because it's um, just a very slow moving textural pro project, I've set up a space drone here, just this kind of unending drone which is uh, one of the base reactor sound generators and in my project it's about once every 100 seconds I'm gonna increase the rate here I'm modulating the gain with this LFO here from Max for Live incredibly useful you can modulate anything that has a knob in Max for Live or a slider or a parameter that's modulatable another thing that I really like to use are what's called follow actions now in Ableton Live in session view um, you have the ability to lay out clips um, in a channel, sort of like end-to-end -end like this. And um, you can actually give them rules on how they change. So in this project specifically, let's turn off all these extra ones that it's actually routing to. We'll get into those in a minute. In this project, I I've only got three clips, actually. So here's a main chord progression here. Here's one that kind of plays off of it, and here's one that, that plays off of it that's just the high end. And this is all I need. I ran this project for about 20 minutes to, to get a recording. Um, and that's just because it moves very slowly. So let's give it uh, a play here and I can show you what's happening. So this pad, um, for a start, is randomized in uh, velocity, just a little bit. Um, every Every note coming through has a, a chance to go plus or minus 8 um, on the velocity. And also, every note has an 88% chance of getting played, so that gives some randomness to the chords. Otherwise, it's just a fairly basic pad. One of the special things about it is that these follow actions, at the end of every clip, um, it actually has a chance to do two things. It'll either play itself again, and has a chance of three to do that, or it'll move on to any other clip um, that's here and play again. Uh, and it's got a 3 to 1 chance of playing itself again or just moving on to another one. So let's just like assume that it's moved on. Alright, here we go, we've changed up. Now this clip has, has a 1 to 1 chance of playing itself again or moving on to any other one. So this is less likely to repeat, whereas this bass chord pattern will probably repeat more often. Um, this other one down here has the same chance. And um, in Ableton 10, you have to set these to um, the length of your clip if you want them to follow at the end of, of every clip. Uh, in Ableton 11, I believe you're changed, they're changing that so you can uh, actually iterate that. You can just specify at the end of this clip, do a thing. Um, it's very nice. So let's uh, stop this. Now, these clips here are actually being sent through Ableton to these other tracks. This one is happening pre-effects, so it actually doesn't get any of like the note probability or velocity adjustment. I'm doing that here. These other ones are actually set post-effects, so there's just a, a couple of different levels of randomness. Um, and now all of them are also modulated in volume by an LFO here. So you're, you're seeing the same things, it's just sort of like iterating itself over and over and over again. So, so the probability that something will change is increased from track to track. This last one here is actually um, uh, arpeggiated. Oh, <laughs> it's freaking out a little bit there. So let's um, turn off this gain modulation here. Let's turn this on so we can actually hear it. Can you hear the ar arpeggiator in the background? And now the rate of this arpeggiator is being modulated as well. Don't know if I'll be able to solo it and still get the MIDI moving through. Now when I bring all these tracks together, all modulating on one another, oh lord, my max for light is a bit broken. they all come together to kind of move the same massive sound um, and to kind of like drive the, the living backbone 
of this project. And on top of that, I have this one that every once in a while uh, goes between playing an empty clip um, at a chance of 12 to 1 to playing this, which is just a very long sort of synth gliding over the top, um, going from a D to a G. This is in D minor. See so how you can have these very dramatic sustains on top of this sort of like bed of chords. Nice open chords. Now on top of that, I've actually got some sounds, some very far away sounds. And now, like, these are just sounds that are sort of out of place from the, the rest of the synthesized stuff that's going on. Um, and it, it modulates between this, this empty clip, jumps between this empty clip, um, at a rate of 10 to 1. Sort of not really important how often it plays, I kind of wanted it to be staggered. Um, and it plays some, some radio sounds that I recorded from shortwave radio. And now here you're seeing a, a different follow action. It's got a 1 to 2 chance of either playing itself, or excuse me, playing uh, any other clip again, or moving back up to the first empty clip. And I believe all of them are like that. So you can hear it in the background. Nice textural element. I've actually got some space noise here. This is, um, I believe, the movement of a planetoid, like translated into just some deep rumbles. Very nice. And and now one of the things that really texturally ties the whole thing together, ties the mix together, is this extremely long spring reverb here. Just an absurdly long reverb for ambient music. And that's it. That is quite literally the entire project. And one of the, the beauty of these self-generating projects is that you can just sort of like let them run, generate, and, and pick out some of the better parts and put it together like that. Or you can hop in and sort of improvise with it. And this is the method that I use to make a lot of my ambient music. These sort of generative systems that can be interfered with, changed, um, modulated in new ways. Uh, the results are, are, the possibilities are endless. So you can see how these ideas would be applied towards other kinds of music. You can take the idea of follow actions and you can actually um, create like automatic breaks and jump between different clips and, and samples completely seamlessly with the legato mode here where a clip takes over in the play position where it previously was. So I could drop in a number of, of samples that are all the same length, a number of like breakbeats, and then sort of move between them with follow actions that are taking over at the exact point in the, the, the break that I was at before. In that way I could let the computer make decisions about my composition. Decisions that are dictated by rules. What I'm doing here is, is honestly on the most simple end of uh, what this program can do with follow actions. It's really quite crazy and they're changing it up a lot for Ableton 11. These are some tips that I use in all sorts of different kinds of production, not just ambient music, even though it is very well built towards these slow evolving textures. Leave a comment and a like if you like the video, subscribe for more, I'll try to do more of them, and uh, I'll see you next time.